Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, uh, one of the believers asked, based on Mark uh, chapter 16, verses 9 through 20, do these ver verses belong in the Bible? And if they do not, does it affect any single major doctrine of Christianity? This has been a long-standing controversy among scholars for a very long time. There are deviations in syntax, grammar, the type of vocabulary used in the Greek text from the rest of the gospel. And some, in fact, many early manuscripts do not contain it. We know that in Appalachia in America, for the last 150 or 160 years, we've had primitive Baptists and certain hyper-Pentecostals. There are dozens of these churches in Appalachia, West Virginia, Kentucky, places like that, that still do this. Some will sip poison, but many of them will pick up snakes to prove they are saved. I personally believe that the teaching in it and the words of Jesus are canonical, are canonical. The only thing that I would question is the supplement to verse 20 in some translations that says, and they promptly reported all these things, instructions to Peter and his companions, and after that Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. That can be fairly disputed. The rest of it, I believe Jesus actually did say. What is not clear, because of the linguistic and, dramatic and grammatical <coughs> distinctions between verse 9 onward and the rest of the gospel, is, was it redacted at a later point? That is, interpolated at a later point, at a later redaction. Was it interpolated? In other words, was it something Jesus actually said but was not in what Peter most likely dictated to Mark as the Gospel of Mark, and then it was tacked on. But I do believe it is canonical that Jesus did say it. Now what about this drinking of the poison and the handling of the snakes? A chief reason, a cardinal reason, I believe it to be canonical, is because in Acts chapter 28 you see it happening. When the serpent bites Paul, he shakes it into the fire. Now this is a picture of the judgment of Satan in the book of Revelation. The serpent is cast into the fire. What happened to Paul on the Isle of Malta following the shipwreck? And he didn't die from the poison, and it was a sign. <clears throat> that may have been what inspired the later redaction to include it, a later redaction to include it. <coughs> so I do believe... It is canonical in the sense. <coughs> I do believe it's canonical in the sense that the Lord Jesus actually did teach it. Poison, being immune from poison. If somebody has right doctrine, they're going to be immune from the toxic effect of false doctrine. Those who are true disciples of Jesus. If a true believer who has right doctrine and is led by the Holy Spirit hears something false, they're going to, he or she are going to be able to discern that's not scriptural. There is a figurative meaning of it. The idea of handling serpents. Well, again, Jesus called the religious leaders of his day a generation of vipers. They're in the character of Satan who beguiled the woman, the seducer, the serpent, Satan the seducer. So it has a literal meaning after Paul's shipwreck, which was, of course, figurative of the judgment of Satan and a sign to the pagan observers in Malta that Paul was of God and not a wicked man. But it also has a symbolic meaning of true believers will not be uh, killed or will not be spiritually killed. They will, to some, in some way, be immune it has a also symbolic meaning in that true believers with the spirit of Jesus who stand sovereignly on the word of God doctrinally 
will be immune to spiritual poison, that is wrong doctrine, and they will be immune to the seductions of Satan and of false religious leaders. We can handle these things. Faithful Christians who know the Word of God are not going to be taken in by the new apostolic reformation or a film like The Shack or The Purpose Driven Lie or the World Council of Churches or the ecumenical movement. They're not going to be affected by the serpents, by the corrupt religious leaders who are operating in the character of satanic seduction. They're not going to be seduced that way. There's that symbolic meaning and there is the literal meaning. So yes, it is canonical. Yes, it is doctrinally valid. Now what these very ignorant people are doing in Appalachia, and they still exist, it's unbelievable. Um, they're taking the text out of context and they're tempting the Lord. It's like what happened when Satan tempted Jesus. He took him to the high pinnacle of the temple and said, throw yourself off. He will give his angels charge over thee. Jesus' response was, okay, I'll jump off to prove who I am. No. He said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. What these people are doing in their ignorance is tempting the Lord. And as a result, they do get bitten and they do die. They become mangled, physically deformed as a result of, of the neurotoxins. They go into orthomuscular deformity. It's terrible. And it's unbelievably ignorant and superstitious. And it, of course, gives Christianity a bad name. They're completely twisting the text out of context. There is a valid literal meaning that we see in Acts 27 and 28. And there is a valid spiritual meaning, symbolically, of handling deception and deceivers. I believe Jesus did teach it. I believe it is canonical. However, although it's the word of Jesus and it is canonical, it may have been interpolated to later manuscripts, but the source of it is not a later redactor. It's something Jesus actually did say and teach. I hope this answers the question. Uh, it's a bit complicated in terms of critical scholarship. You have a similar complication with John chapter 8, but that's not the question that was asked today. Thank you so much for your question. And God bless you. My name is Jacob Prash. Dear friends, greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows 
who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.